unrighteousness. Ask the Lord to cleanse you. Ask the Lord to purify you. Ask the Lord to cleanse you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Ask the Lord to cleanse you of every impurity, everything that will prevent him from hearing your prayers. Anything that is not of God in our lives, in our hearts, ask him to forgive you, to cleanse you, to cleanse you of all filth, of all bitterness, of all anger, whatever it is that you may be harboring, whatever it is that you may you may be thinking that any right unrighteousness in you, in me, let's ask the Lord to cleanse us by his precious blood, the blood of Jesus. Let's ask the blood of Jesus to cleanse us in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name, let's just welcome the Holy Spirit who is already here. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to have his way in our lives, have his way in our administrations today. Let his name be glorified in our lives, in our family, in, in, in our ministry, in the name of Jesus. Let his name be glorified and his plans come to pass concerning us and the ministry. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. I now um, hand over to the choir. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Let's bow our head and worship. Let's worship our maker. Being alive today is not by chance, it's by his grace. Let's thank him for his faithfulness. Let's thank him. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh. 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 Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man in battle. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man of war. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man in battle. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man of war. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man in battle. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man of war. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are a mighty man in battle. You are Jehovah. You are a mighty man of war. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man in battle. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man of war. You are Jehovah. 
over. There is something that makes me come into your presence, my Abba. There is something that makes me come into your presence, my Abba, my Abba, my Abba. My Abba, my Abba, there is something that makes me come into your presence. My Abba, it's your mercy that makes me come into your presence. My Abba, it's your grace that makes me come into your presence. My Abba, my Abba, my Abba, my Abba, oh, my Abba. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My Abba, it's your mercies that makes me come into your presence. My Abba. My Abba, my Abba, there is something that makes me come into your presence. My Abba, you are the boss man in the furnace. You are in works and water. Oh, Lord, my God, your name be praised. You are the first man in the furnace. You are here of the water. Oh, Lord, my God, your name be praised. Oh, my God, you're the bread. You are the first man in the furnace. You are here of some water. Oh, Lord, my God, you're the bread. My holy love, my foundation, 
my protection, my atmosphere, my sweet heaven. Here you are, live and have my being. Jesus, you are my holy Lord, my foundation, my protection, my atmosphere, my sweet heaven. Here you are, live and have my being. Jesus, you are my holy Lord. Jesus, you're my holy now. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Jesus, you're my holy now. We have trusted on you. We know how great you are. We know you are able, Father, defend your name. Father, we have trusted on you. We know how great you are. We know you are able, Father, defend your name. In kingdom, what means we? Father, defend your name. My Lord, defend your name. My Lord, defend your name. Oh, my Lord, defend your name. My Lord, defend your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to you, almighty God. Thank you, Father Lord. Hallelujah. You are our defender. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, sister, for that wonderful, wonderful present worship session. Once more, once more again, you're welcome to Kingdom Way Ministries. Tonight is our um, revival and breakthrough prayers. And today um, we are praying on the following topic, which says, I bind and terminate the spirit of debt and devour with all associated problems in Jesus' name. And our scripture today, first of all, is going to be, well, our scripture where the prayers are coming from is the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 38, Exodus chapter 3 verse 20, 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7, Malachi chapter 3 verse 8, to 12, Deuteronomy 28, verse 46 to 48, Philippians 4, 19, Isaiah 4, 45, verse 13, Proverbs 6, verse 6 to 10, verse Samuel 30, verse 8, and then we shall personalize um, Psalms 91. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to read some scriptures for you. And I read Luke chapter 6, 38, which says, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over with will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Exodus 23, verse 20, it says, So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. Amen. I want you to declare this the topic for today and says I bind I want you to I want you to um come before the Lord say I bind and terminate the spirit of debt the spirit of debt and devour with all associated problems in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, I bind, I bind and terminate the spirit of debt in my family, in my home. I bind that spirit of debt and devour 
of all, uh, with all associated problems, associated problems. I bind that spirit of death out of my life, out of my family, out of my children. Death will not follow us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and declared, amen. You're going to take that first prayer and say, oh Lord, the grace to be a giver, the grace to be a giver, let that grace fall upon me, fall upon my family, fall upon my children, fall upon every single member of that grace to be a giver, a giver, a genuine giver, a giver with a pure heart, a giver with a pure motive, the grace to be a giver, the grace to be a giver, let that grace grant be granted to me in the name of Jesus. Let the grace be granted to our family, to our children in the name of Jesus, because our Father is a giver. Therefore, Lord, the grace to be a giver, to be a cheerful giver for that matter, to be a cheerful giver, ready, to, willing, a willingful giver. Let that grace come upon me. Let that grace come upon my children. Let that grace come upon my children's children in the name of Jesus. Let that grace flow into my bloodline. Let that grace flow into my family. Family. Let that grace flow into my children's children's family in the name of Jesus. Let that grace flow into this ministry, Kingdom Way ministry. Let the grace to be a cheerful, to be a willful, a willful giver in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are praying and say, oh Lord, every covenant in place that is preventing me from being a cheerful giver, for being a giver like you, oh Lord, Oh Lord, destroy those hold upon my life. Destroy those hold upon my life. Destroy them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, destroy them from my life, from my family, from my children. Every covenant, every covenant in place, in place that is preventing any of us, preventing our family, preventing us from being a giver, from being a willful giver. Lord, let it be destroyed. Let that hold be destroyed from our lives, be destroyed from our children, be destroyed from our life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed out of our lives, out of our family. In the name of Jesus, 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 you are going to pray and address the spirit of begging. Address your spirit of begging. I command you to depart from me and my family in the name of Jesus and never return. Spirit of begging we will not be found begging. You spirit of begging, depart from me, depart from our families, depart. We will not beg in the name of Jesus. We are not a beggar. We are not a beggar. Therefore, it's a spirit. Therefore, Lord, we address this spirit of begging. You are not our portion. Depart from us. Depart from our ministry. Be, depart from our homes. Depart from our children. Children, depart from every area of our lives. We will not beg for bread. We will not be a beggar. We are meant the head and not the tail. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of begging, depart from us. Never return. Never return. Never you return in our lives, in our homes, in our ministries. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, pray and say, oh Lord, oh Lord, stretch out your mighty hand. Stretch out your mighty hands against the powers of Egypt, of Egypt holding my prosperity, holding the prosperity of my family, of my family. Oh Lord, stretch forth your mighty hand. Stretch forth your mighty hand. Stretch forth your mighty hand upon every power of Egypt that has been holding our prosperity, holding the prosperity of our bloodlines, holding the prosperity of our children, of our lives, of our marriages, of our ministry. Oh Lord, stretch forth your mighty hand upon the powers of Egypt, the powers of Egypt, the powers of Egypt, Lord, stretch forth and destroy them and destroy them and let them be released, release the prosperity of our, our families, 
Release the prosperity of Kingdom Way Ministry. Release the prosperity. Release our prosperity. A portion to us. That has been a portion to us. That has been meant for us. In the name of Jesus. Release the prosperity of our families. Of our children. Of our marriages. Of our work. All the prosperity of our businesses. In the name of Jesus. Of our ideas. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father God. Blessed be your holy name. They're saying, oh Lord, cause your favor, your favor to locate where the prosperity of our families has been locked up. Cause your favor to locate those. Your favor, oh Lord, to locate the prosperity where the prosperity of our families, of our families has been locked up, has been remained hidden. Oh Lord, cause your favor right now to, to unlock to, to bring them out, out of their hiding, out of their places where they've been, where they've carried them, where they've been locked up, where they've been locked up. Our prosperity, it is time for us to be prosperous in our soul, in our bodies, in our mind, in everything that concerns us. Oh Lord, as our body prospers, as our spirit prospers, Father God, in the name of the cause your favor, oh Lord, cause your favor and let them be released. Let there be release. Let there be a release. Let there be release from their prison, from their cages, from where our prosperity has been caged, has been locked up. We command them to be released. Command your prosperity to be released. That which is a portion for you, for your family. No long lack. No more lack. You have to use your mouth to open, to, uh, to release them. Command the release. Let there be release of my prosperity. Let there be release of the prosperity of my children, of my family. In the name of Jesus, let there be released from any evil hand, from any evil coven, from any ungodly ties, anything that has been holding our prosperity. In the name of Jesus, let there be released. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, say, oh Lord, judge every prince of Egypt. Judge every prince of Egypt. Every taskmasters, every taskmasters are assigned to monitor, to monitor the prosperity of your family. Every monitoring spirit, monitoring the prosperity of your family so that none can get anything, so that none can get their portion. Lord my God, their inheritances, the prosperity of our inheritance. Father God, Lord my God, judge, judge, judge every prince of Egypt. Judge every taskmasters assigned to monitor, to monitor, to monitor our prosperities in the name of Jesus. Judge, judge every prince, every principalities, all that has been assigned against Kingdom Ways Ministry prosperity. Judge them now, judge them now. Judge them now. Judge them now because you are just judge. Therefore, oh Lord, judge them now. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. We're going to pray. Um, Second Kings says, Second Kings 4, verse 1 to 7, it says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant Fear the Lord and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So when she, so she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons shall live the re on the rest. Amen. 
you are going to pray and say, oh Lord, have mercy on me and my family. Let me not repeat the same mistakes of the past in Jesus' name. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. Let me not repeat the same mistake, the same mistake, the same things that was done previously that got our family or families into debt. Therefore, Lord, have mercy. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. I will not repeat the same mistakes. I will not repeat the same mistakes my spouse repeated. I will not make the same mistakes that my children uh, that my children will end up making in the name of Jesus. Lord, my children will not make that same mistake. My children's children will not make it that same mistakes in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy in the name of Jesus. Have mercy, oh Lord. Have mercy, oh Lord. Have mercy, oh Lord. Have mercy, oh Lord. Have mercy in the name name of Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord, remember me and do not input the sins and mistakes of others on me and my family. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, have mercy on me and do not input those sins, those mistakes, those mistakes. Oh Lord, don't, don't put them upon us. Do not put upon us. Let us not walk through that route. Let our family not walk through that route. Let our children, our children's children. Therefore, Lord, Lord, remember Remember us. Do not input those weak ways. Do not let, do not allow us to pay the debt of another in the name of Jesus. In, of another in the name of Jesus, Lord God, by the speaking of Your blood, by Your speaking of Your blood, wipe away all debts that has been accredited to our names, Lord. By Your blood, You pay the ultimate price. You pay the debt for us. Therefore, Lord, we are asking You. To wipe away every debt, every debt, spiritual debt, spiritual debt, spiritual debt, financial debt, every debt, anything that represents debt, debt in our lives, in our bloodlines, in our family. Lord, by your speaking blood, by your blood, cleanse us, by your blood, pay off, pay off on our behalf in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, you are going to address the spirit of poverty and say, spirit of poverty, I divorce you from my life, from my family. I divorce you. I divorce every spirit of poverty out of my life. You spirit of poverty, you have no association with me. You cannot locate me. You have no association with my life, with my bloodlines, with my children, with my family. Therefore, I address you today. I divorce you. I divorce any, any agreement with poverty, any agreement with the spirit of poverty, any evil agreement, any evil exchange where my virtues, where our virtues have been exchanged and given for poverty. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we divorce those agreements, we tear those contracts, we tear those contracts, we burn it with the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we are null, we are null. Every agreement, every agreement with poverty, every agreement with poverty. Oh Lord, we are knowledge by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, we ask that the blood of Jesus will wash away, will wash away and flush out every contract that was made, whether we know about it, whether we do not know about it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, that has exchanged our family's wealth, that has exchanged of our family world through evil agreements, through evil covenants that were made by our ancestors. That Lord, that is bringing poverty, bringing shame, bringing bringing rejection, bringing pain, bringing lack, bringing debt in our family. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. 
You're going to pray. This is very important. You're going to pray that in the name of Jesus, I terminate every evil agenda of the occult, of the world systems, satanic banks, and, and, and that, that, that has been drawing, that has been tricking, that has been tricking us into death. Every world systems, every system that has been put in place to drink the milk of our wealth, to drink the milk of the children of God through death. Every systems of the world that has been put in place to draw our wealth, the debts, we, we will not be debtors, we will not we will be lenders. Therefore, Lord, there are systems that have been put in place. Father God, we terminate those systems. We some, terminate satanic banks that have been set up to drink the milk, to drink the, 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 the milk of the children of God, of the chosen one, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Malachi 3. Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, in what way we have robbed you? In tithes and offering. Amen. I'm not going to read the rest, but you know, you know the scripture very well. You're going to ask the Lord and say to remove, first of all, any curse that you yourself has brought upon your life as a result of disobedience. Because this verse you know already. So you're going to ask the Lord to remove the curses that you have brought yourself upon yourself through disobedience. We know the Bible says it's clear there what we should do, but we will stubborn and do our own way. So ask the Lord to have mercy upon you, to help you, to remove those curses. It is the curse. No man can remove it. It is only God that can remove those curses that we ourselves have brought upon ourselves. It's not the devil. It's not anything, but it's we ourselves through disobedience. Therefore, ask the Lord to remove those curses that we brought upon ourselves through our disobedience, through our not disobeying, not hearkening to the voice of God, not hearkening to the instructions of the Lord, not hearkening to the commands, to the, to the ways of God, to the word of God, to when he says do, we are not doing. Therefore, Lord, we ask you that Lord, remove those curses. Remove the curses we brought upon our lives, upon ourselves, in the name of Jesus. Now say, let, let all these curses that have been issued upon us be converted to blessings. Let it be converted to blessings. Let it be converted to blessings in the name of Jesus. Let it be converted to blessings. Let it be converted to blessings in the name of Jesus. Let it be converted. Let it be converted in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You're also going to say to repent. You're going to repent for, 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 for committing robbery. For committing robbery. For being a robber. You're going to repent and say, God, I repent for the times I was a robber. For the times that I lied. For the times that I, I cheated. For the time that I cheated you of what belongs to you, of what you say I should give. Therefore, Lord God Almighty, I repent of those times. I repent. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me and my family in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to judge you. Ask the Lord to judge you because you have been found guilty. You have been found guilty of robbery because you, you have been found guilty of robbery and greed. Where I've been greedy, where I've, I've held back what the Lord has, what is meant for the Lord, what is meant for another. What is, the Lord, I repent. Forgive me and judge me. Find me guilty in the name of and I repent of them in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus ask God to give you the, the grace to be obedient and to restore you to restore you financially to restore you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Father God blessed be your holy name in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen you're going to pray lastly and pray that Lord bless the works of my hands
Bless the works of my everything I find to do in business, in career, in work, whatever I'm doing, Lord, bless it. Cause it to multiply. Cause my work to multiply. Cause that business to multiply. Cause that idea to multiply. Cause the ministry to multiply. Cause us to be fruitful in all our ways. In the name of Jesus, fruitfulness, fruitfulness, fruitfulness. We declare fruitfulness in all our lives, in all our ways. Fruitfulness in ministry, fruitfulness in our body, soul, and spirit in the name of Jesus. Fruitfulness in our body, infirmities is far from us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. We are going to personalize Psalms 91. This says, my family and I dwell in the secret place of the Most High and shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and fortress, our God on him we lean and rely and in him we trust. For he will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover us with his pinions and under his wings shall we trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler to us we shall not be afraid of the terror of the night nor of the arrows that flies by day nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday a thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand but it shall not come near us only a spectator shall we be as we witness the reward of the wicked because we have made the Lord our refuge and the most high our dwelling place. There shall no evil befall us, nor any plague or calamity come near our dwelling place. For he will give his angels charge over us to accompany and defend and preserve us in all our ways. They shall bear us up on their hands, lest we dash our feet against a stone. My family and I shall tread upon the lion and other, the young lion and the serpent shall we tremble underfoot. Because we have set our love upon him, upon the Lord, therefore will God will, therefore God will deliver us. He will set us on high because we know and understand his name. We shall call upon him and he will answer us. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us and honor us. Verse 16, with long life will God satisfy and show us his salvation in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Um, we now welcome our pastor. Pastor, you're welcome. Sorry to take one minute of your time. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the prayer session. Thank you uh, to uh, my daughter that led us later on in worship. God bless you all. I pray that God Almighty will continue to increase you, to strengthen you. He will continue to meet all of you at the very point of your needs. Even as you're serving God, as you're making yourself available for God's use, God Almighty has promised us that he will owe no man anything. Whatever is your own desire according to the will of God, they shall be met in Jesus' name. I welcome every one of you, and I pray that today will be a day that God Almighty will reach out and reach down to somebody. Wherever you are, wherever you are, just get ready because God is going to do exceedingly abundantly, even beyond our own expectations. And it shall be well with you all in Jesus' name. Turn your Bible, let's look at Joshua in chapter 21. Joshua 21. I read first from the New International Version. It says, and that's verse 45, Joshua 21, verse 45. It says, Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. 
Now I want to read from the New Living Translation. He says, not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he has spoken came true. The Bible tells us that we have been engrafted into the family of Israel. So, by the redemption and the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary, we have become partakers of all these good promises of God. And tonight, I want to talk to you under the title, Remain alert. God will fulfill his promises. Remain alert. Be watchful. God will fulfill his promises. You know, when someone makes a promise, or even if we make promise ourselves, to someone, the recipient, that person that we have promised, will be waiting expectantly for the time we are going to fulfill that promise. Even your children, if you promise them that, okay, when I come back from work, I'll do this, I'll do this. Maybe you have forgotten, they will never forget, they will remember. A promise is a declaration. It's a declaration that you are going to do something or that you are going to refrain from doing something. And that is why, once again, the title is Remain Alert. Remain Alert. Because God is going to fulfill his promise. All those promises he has made to us concerning a supernatural increase, God will fulfill everything. It may look like he's tiring. You know, When you promise somebody something, for some reason, that person may not know when you are going to do it, but you know that you are promised and that you will do it when you are ready. But do you know that many of the promises we give Are always broken. Many of them. Because we don't really have any mind of doing anything. We only want to tell that person, okay, we do it so that they can leave you alone. So that you can have some peace of mind. Deep, deep, deep down in your mind, you know you're not going to do it. And that is why you find a lot of people breaking your promise. Very rare for you to find people who will promise and fulfill their promise. And because of that, it creates disappointment in the mind of people. People get disappointed. Listen, even children, your children, your own children, when you say, okay, I'll come and pick you up after school so that we can go to so, so, so place. And you did not call. They will be disappointed because they have been expecting. 
And next time when you promise, you will not take it seriously. You say, oh, that's how daddy always promised. That's how mommy always promised. He never fulfills his promise. Or do you know that Jesus' promises never fail? His promises to us never fail. God's promises to us never fail. He won't forget. He is not promising us so that we can just leave him alone. He is promising us so that we can know that he is God. Look at Lamentations in chapter 3. Lamentation in chapter 3. Let's look at it from verse 22. He says, through the lost mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your people. The Lord is my portion. That's verse 24. Says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. Great is God's faithfulness. As great as God's faithfulness is, every time God promises, there is always, always a waiting period. And many of us have been in the moment of waiting in our lives. Many of us. We've been praying and waiting, praying and waiting, praying and waiting. At some point, we might even be thinking that God has forgotten us. In times, of waiting, many people become uncertain. They become uncertain. Their faith starts getting cold. And as a result, they start thinking negatively. However, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord reminds us today that his word cannot be altered and he will absolutely without any doubt at all keep his word and fulfill it. That is why he told us in Habakkuk, look at Habakkuk in chapter 2. Read verse 3, but it's, it is, if you look at it from verse 2, it said, Get a pen, get ink, get paper, write it down. But I read verse 3. He says, The reason I want you to write it down is this for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It is only the time and how God will do it that we do not know. One thing that is very sure is that God promises to give us hope for the future. He said it himself. He has promised to give us hope for the future. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and in verse 11, 
the word of God says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29 and in verse 11. For I know, I God, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you the future and We need to trust in the promise given. Trust in the promise given. When you trust in the promise giver, then you will be able to claim those promises. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. And some understand slowness. Some people, they understand slowness. When you, when you, you visit them or when they visit you and they're expecting you to go inside and bring out that thing that you promised and you did not bring it out, they'll be wondering that, why is this person so slow in, uh, in, in doing what he promised? Yeah, that's the way some people understand it. But look at that passage again. He says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. But is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to call to repentance. And who will know all these things more than David? Who will know more than David? When you look at Psalm 27, Psalm 27 and in verse 14, the Bible says, wait patiently for the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Wait patiently for the Lord. Can you see what David is advised there for us? Wait patiently. And while waiting, be strong. Courageous. Why must you be strong? You must be strong. Because if you are not strong, your mind can, can go into error. You can be led astray. You can be deceived. They can tell you there is something else that you can do. So you have to be strong. And then you have to be courageous. Like our Lord Jesus Christ, who told Satan, get it behind me. I don't need that advice you are giving me. I don't need you. Get it behind me. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Wait patiently for the Lord. In that verse, he said that two times. It's, it's laying emphasis on it. I'm reading the New King James Version. He's laying emphasis on it so that you can know how important it is for you to wait patiently for the Lord. When we ask God to show us what we should do, listen, God will answer us. How will he answer you? Through his word. We'll answer us through his word. Not through somebody that will deceive you and tell you that they, 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 they see something for you. 
not through any stargazer or any palm reader. He will answer you through his word. And it is only through his word that you can build your faith in him. When you think something is happening to you and you read the word of God, you will find there that it has happened to somebody before and this is how that person was able to get over it. It is through the word of God that your faith can be improved. And the second thing you need to do is you need to meditate on the word of God. And as you're meditating on the word of God, you have to internalize his truth in your heart. You have to internalize it so that somebody will not call and tell you that, oh, don't worry, Old Testament is gone. Don't worry about it. And, 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 and some people are so brave when they talk about the word of God, they, you can know that they don't have any plan to go to hell. No matter what title they give themselves, no matter what name they call themselves, if the Bible tells us that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and Jesus Christ, and you are saying things about the word of God, picking this, removing this, saying this one is not right, that person definitely is an anatomy. So you've got to be very, very careful. Meditate on the word of God and then internalize his truth in your heart. Once he opens the door, once God opens the door, you know, I told you, I say, remain alert. Remain alert because God is going to open the door. And once God opens the door, you have to step in by faith. You have to step in by faith. If God has given you food at all, and it is late for you to cook it and start eating it, and you are praying to God, God, should I cook it? Should I cook it? What type of question is that? God will just be looking at you. Now, what's wrong with this, my son? What's wrong with this, my daughter? He has already given you the food. You have everything. And you're asking, God, should I cook it? Don't cook it. Remain hungry. And then be blaming God. When God, when you are alert, God will open the door. You have to step in by faith. And as you step in by faith, he will then open another one for you. And he will continue to open another one. But you have to step in by faith. And you can only step in if you learn to trust him. Confirm that God is faithful all the times. No matter what situation you find yourself. Confirm. Always say it with your mouth that I know that my God is faithful God. And be careful with the habit of complacency. Some people, they are so complacent with their position, their present situation, they don't want to get any more. They think they are okay with what they are they have. Maybe they have a house or two and they have a car or two cars and they think that, oh yes, I've arrived. I don't need God in my life again. I don't need anything more again. Whereas God is still taking them far. But they decided that no, they have got enough. God, give the rest to somebody else. Once we receive God's promises, don't let us take them for granted. 
Don't use them to fight God again. Don't use your, your work. Don't use your, your money. Don't use your, 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 your situation, social situation. Don't use it to fight God again. You do that, then you are taking, you are taking God for granted. Oh, uh, it's because of my work. Is because of my children. Is because of this. Is because of that. You, you, are, you are taking God for granted. You are using the blessings of God to fight God. You need to keep it in your heart every time that this money that I have is God that has made it possible. This position, this work that I'm doing is God that has made it possible for me. Whatever you are right now, let everybody know that is God that has made it possible. Work on what God has told you to do. Keep being faithful, even after the promises has come true. Keep faithful, keep faithful. When my daughter was leading us just now, she was reading Malachi, in chapter 3, many people don't like to hear that passage. So she read a little bit of it and she kept quiet, leaving everybody to start to go and finish it themselves. Many people find, the, if you say, the blessing of Abraham, they are all mine. Ah, oh, yes, everybody will raise up their hand. They want the blessing of Abraham. But when you now tell them, about what God said concerning what they have. They will say that one is Old Testament. Abraham's blessing is not Old Testament. They want it. And they are deceiving themselves. They think they are deceiving God. Whether you give to God or not, you cannot stop the work of God. Jesus Christ said, if you tell these ones to keep their mouth shut, I can raise up stools. And stools will be doing what human beings should do. I pray that God will not replace any one of us with stools in the mighty name of Jesus. Galatians chapter 6. Let us look at verse 9. Galatians chapter 6 and in verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap it. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. I want you to remember that. Even if you don't remember all the other passages that we have read, remember that one. It is very, very important. Many people, they grow weary after some time. And when you start a race, go and ask anybody. If you start a race, maybe you start 100 meters race, and you are the one leading, and by the time you get to 70 meters, 80 meters, and you said, no, nobody can catch up with me again. And instead of running to the end, you start trotting you'll be surprised when you see people that you have left behind running past to go and claim a victory. That is where we are being warned here. Let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Remain Alert. Be alert. God is going to fulfill his promises. Let us pray. Before I pray for you, I want you to say, O oh Lord, I claim all your promises. Because I know that all your promises, they are for my good. And they are for my bright future. I claim them today. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father, for being faithful to me. Strengthen me. Make me alert. If by your word and if by your presence, even in the moments of waiting, so that I don't miss your promise at the end. I thank you, God, for what you have been doing in my life so far. And I thank you in advance for what you will still do. Thank you for the much-awaited change that I've been waiting for. That I've been praying about. I know that it is coming my way, even today. In Jesus' name, amen. I now prophesy upon you. Acceleration. Acceleration, fast movement, fast movement. I rebuke every snail speed. I rebuke every snail speed. I decree fast movement, acceleration into your success race now, into your increase now. Receive that fast movement now. Things that should have taken years to accomplish, mm -hmm. I decree that they will take days in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I prophesy that from this day forward, your steps are ordered by the Lord. Mm -hmm. He will be directing your steps. He will cause you to be at the right place at the right time. So that things will happen to make your life great. In the mighty name of Jesus. Things will happen that will bring great powerful testimony. Into your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. All those that are pursuing you. In your dreams. I command them now. To begin to pursue themselves. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said I command them to turn away from you. And start pursuing themselves. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I command. That that's your picture. That has been taken into the demonic kingdom. And that is being used. As a remote control. Against your life. I command that picture to be burnt to ashes now in the mighty name of Jesus. That picture of your son that have been taken into that demonic shrine, I command that picture now to be burnt to ashes in the mighty name of Jesus. Every demonic delegate that have been assigned against you from the coven of the enemy, I command them now that by the reason of the anointing of God, I command the thunder of God to strike in their midst right now and every one of them to be scattered and to start running, never to look back again in the mighty name of Jesus. And for you that every time that you sleep, you are always dreaming that somebody that you are eating with some people right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I cancel and I destroy the activities of every night caterer that have been assigned against you. And I forbid their food from touching your lips again in the mighty name of Jesus. I said their food, their drink, will never attract you again in the name of Jesus. Your lips is now anointed with the blood of Jesus. And it will refuse that food. It will refuse that drink whenever they bring it again in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree total destruction now 
of all satanic technology that they are using against your life, whether it's a crystal ball, whether it's, it's, it's the sand, whether it's anything at all, any effigy somewhere, whatever satanic technology anybody is using against your life, against the life of your children today, by the reason of the anointing of God, I destroy them now. I destroy them now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power of darkness that is haunting for your life, I command them to be roasted by fire of God now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All those contaminations in your life that you have accumulated through bad dreams, I command them now to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No matter what sickness they are brought into your body in the past, you are being freed now. You are being loosed now from those sicknesses, from those powers of evil in the mighty name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is flushing everything out of your body now, right from the crown of your head to the very soles of your feet. The blood of Jesus is working now. Is working now wherever you are, however you are listening to me. The blood of Jesus is working on you now. He's flushing out all those contaminations in the mighty name of Jesus. That path that they are using to enter into your life. I say that opening that they are using to enter into your life. I command that opening now to be permanently closed in the mighty name of Jesus. All powers, evil powers, demonic powers, witchcraft powers that are bent on doing you harm, that are promised they will do you harm. I command them now, right now, wherever they are, by the reason of the anointing of God, I command them to receive the lightning of God now and be struck down in the mighty name. Of Jesus, whether they are near you, whether they are far from you, wherever they are, I said, lightning of God will strike them down in the mighty name of Jesus. And every arrow of destruction that have been fired at you from anywhere, from any angle, from any source, whether from near you or from far away from you, I command those arrows to go back to their shooter now. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are here. You are here. And the enemy have been using manipulation to take away all your resources. Right now, by this revelation, the enemy will no longer be able to convert your right hand to the left hand again. In the mighty name of Jesus. The, the, that power is taken away from them now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They will not be able to convert. Your right hand. Into your left hand again. All those satanic letters. That have been written against you. That are finding their way. Coming towards you. I command them now to be burnt to ashes. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the tongues of your enemy, um, however powerful they think they are, wherever they are gathered together, I say their tongues now, I command their tongues to be divided against each other. And I release confusion into their midst. I release confusion into their midst. They will no longer be able to even come together fight you anymore. They are confused now. Like Nebuchadnezzar when he was confused and he was eating grass. They are confused now in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, God Almighty is turning your weariness into hope. I say somebody here, you are weary. God is turning your weariness into hope. Receive hope now in place of that weariness. 
receive joy now in place of that sadness. Receive the truth of God now in place of that doubt. From today, put your trust in the name of Jesus and you will see how God will be fulfilling his promises in your life. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And let the church say, Amen. Let's bring the service to a close. Let's bring the service to a close. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Let's give all the glory to God. All the glory must be to the Lord, for he is worthy of all praise, of all praises. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord, all the glory, all the glory must be to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you.